again. Her Magnificat would have read like a rallying protest speech, calling for justice and putting powerful words in the mouth of a self-proclaimed servant. You know that singing is an act of resistance in itself, don't you? Slaves knew this. When they sang their spirituals, they were both practice, praising God and protesting their masters who locked them out of worship, but couldn't keep them out of the promise of deliverance of the Bible. And the civil rights leaders knew this too, singing songs like We Shall Overcome, when so many in society didn't give them a chance to advance their cause of justice, let alone triumph. Mary and Elizabeth knew this. They also knew just how ridiculous their situation was. Singing of light in a world of darkness is indeed nothing short of an act of resistance. We light candles against the winter light, not because of the winter light or during, but against, reminding us that the light of Advent, the light of Christ, is truly a protest to and a resistance of the shadows of despair and sorrow that gather all around us. Mary knew that redemption and restoration was still a work in progress, but she sings as if the things in her words have already happened. She remembers forward, she hopes, she carried within her the meeting place of her longing and God's yearning, her yes to God, to bearing the God who was already taking flesh and form within her was a microcosm of what God was doing in the world. Listening to Mary's story makes me think about the people who embody the courage of Mary, those who embody hope and trust in God's promise of redemption and despite the everyday suffering, a life that seems to deny that promise. I think of survivors of sexual abuse and assault who refuse to give in to despair at the horror that she has lived through and instead asks what she can do to minister to others. I think of a man who lost his job, ended up on the streets, wound up in prison and at last ditch effort went to a nonprofit hiring agency where he discovered ordinary people who reminded him that he was valuable, a person of great worth and how he now works every day to bring the same hope to others in the situation he found himself in. I think of spouses and children who care every day for loved ones experiencing illness and disease for whom there may be no cure in sight, who give the gift of dignity at the end of life. I think of social workers, teachers, and others who give time, effort, and energy to care and advocate for children who have no one who cares for them. I think of all those who offer their time and ability to take care of the least of these. I think of you in our own congregation and other congregations that we know of who are willing to risk entering into relationship with someone who is completely unlike you in order to share the love of God. I think of ordinary people who are willing to obey God's claim on their lives, who say yes to the seemingly impossible, who open themselves to a life utterly illuminated and undergirded by God's own grace the angel shows up, tells her not to fear, reminds her that she's favored, gives her the news that she would bear the Messiah, says she's blessed, and then leaves. The angel leaves without answering any questions or continuing to journey with her, leaving her the ongoing work of discernment and discipleship. Her yes doesn't signal the end of mystery. Mystery has only begun. We have no idea of knowing what Mary knew. My guess is that like us, she knew just enough to get started. My guess is that the work of bearing God into the world involved endless discovery and ongoing consent, just as it does today. My guess is that each trembling yes, Mary whispered into God's heart, changed the world, as does ours. We hear in this story that God notices and blesses someone who by all accounts is nobody in the ancient world. And when this nobody young girl gets God's blessing and accepts God's favor, the world begins to turn. When you believe God notices, favors, and blesses you, you may just change the world. As you go about this week, whatever you do, whomever you meet, remember that God notices you and blesses you so that you might be blessings to the world. May it be so in your life and in mine. Amen. In times when humanity disappoints, perhaps when even our own thoughts and behaviors disappoint, it is an important act 
to call out, name and claim the consequences of our wrongs. And in times of distress, it is a prophetic act to call out, name and claim our belief in the promise of joy. Hear these statements of belief. I believe that sometimes we have been silent in the face of injustice. And I believe that, that we, we are, are capable of raising our voices and, and insisting on goodness for all. I believe that we have been afraid of feeling deeply, making our joy small. And I believe that the deep joy of community can always be present, even in hard times. I believe that sometimes we wonder if we can make a difference. And I believe that small acts of kindness and help do make a real difference. We believe even when we are discouraged. We believe that when we are discouraged, raising our voices for justice will offer us joy. So you're invited into stillness, a comfortable position of rest, to find quiet, to take a deep breath, deep listening posture, maybe close your eyes or fix them on a candle as we prepare for a time of prayer. and joy. Meet us in this stillness. Free us from any restlessness. Hear our prayers and open us to you. Holy One, here we are. We come to you bringing our doubts, our fears, 
our feelings of inadequacy and powerlessness, our sadness. We come to you bringing our hopes, our visions, our relationships, our anticipation, our joys. We are yours, our minds, our hearts, our souls, our bodies. Invite us to do the unusual. Take everything we are and help us to become what you would have us be. For your many gifts, we give you thanks. For every breath we take, for every beat of our hearts, every movement in our bodies, we give you thanks. For the ear that listens, for the hand that caresses, for the arms that reach out in love, we give you thanks. For relief from pain, for tears of shared sorrow, for the laughter of shared joy, we give you thanks. For the freedom to choose, for the ability to love, for the power of hope, we give you thanks. For the presence you reveal to us, the courage you offer us, and the joy of rest you assure will be ours, we give you thanks. We especially give thanks today for all those who share their love and service. For the frontline workers, the medical staff, the law keepers, the teachers, the cooks, the servers, the shopkeepers, the transit workers, and all essential service workers who provide for us. Keep them safe. We give thanks for all who follow guidelines, who share joy in new ways for those who learn new skills and those who help us learn, and for all who show and spread kindness and calmness, keep them safe. We ask you to bring light and joy to your people where needs and challenges go unseen. Remind us that when even one of us is struggling, we all struggle. Some of us are ill, oh God, we ask for healing. Some of us are scared. We ask for courage. Some of us are hungry. Help us find ways to feed bodies and souls. Some of us have no voice. Help us to speak up. Some of us are out of work, out of homes, out of hope. Help us to find the grace to share our abundance and courage to answer the call to help. When we have the opportunity to open our doors, let us find safe ways to welcome the chance to serve you and your people. Let us be more like Mary, courageous, faithful, grateful, hopeful. We are yours. Take everything we are and help us to become everything you would have us be. We pray especially today for those who have tested positive for COVID, who are ill, who are caring for family, we pray for the family overcome with grief at the loss from a heart attack of a worker on our Sussex site and the co-workers who carry on in their grief. We pray for our staff and volunteers who keep this ministry going and us connected. And we pray for ourselves, our fatigue in this pandemic, our loss of fellowship, our attempts to celebrate this season of joy amid challenges and disappointment. Give us all the grace to feel the deep joy that life with your love, the deep joy that we are favored, is enough. Holy One who hears all prayers, listen to us now as we name silently those people and situations that are in our hearts. For these and all who need your care and support, whether friend, stranger, enemy, bless them with the strength of your grace and bless us with the strength to reflect your love. God of light and joy, we believe. Be the source of life in our every day. Weep with us and laugh with us. Call us to serve and guide us on our journeys. Be the air we breathe. We pray in the name of the one who brought us the greatest joy of all and taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. There are still things happening in our community, even when we can't be together. And here's a few of them. Uh, we do gather for a fellowship time following worship uh, after the Mark Danju postlude. Um, you're invited to stay and we'll send you off into some breakout rooms and see what happens in those conversations. Uh, Bible study happens on Mondays at 1.30. They're not, uh, the schedule is coming up. There's one Monday that you're not meeting, but uh, most Mondays right now, we're focusing on the themes of this series that we're doing and looking at the movies that are suggested in some of the other uh, material. Uh, starting in January, we'll go back to looking at the previous day's um, lectionary readings and one of the, the readings from that day. So if you're looking to be involved in that, please let me know and I can put you in touch with Dorothy Jeffrey if you don't already have her information. We will worship Christmas Eve together here uh, on Zoom, the same that we have been doing for the last nine months. Our worship service will be at seven and you are welcome to join us and invite anyone that you think might wish to be with us in that time. The 27th, there will not be a worship service led from here. However, if you typically join worship through the phone or through this link, um, we will stream someone else's worship so that you still have a worship experience. You don't have to figure out a new way of doing that. Uh, in the email, though, there's also links for some of the other churches that are doing uh, Zoom worship or releasing worship on the 27th. And so you're welcome to pay attention to those and be uh, with those folks in worship. We'll celebrate Epiphany on January 3rd together back here in the space. You, if you're on email, you may have seen this. If you're not, this is probably news for you. But we uh, have been asked whether or not we would like to uh, make Jubilee Hall into a cold weather shelter for this winter. Uh, because of COVID, the space needed has become much more great because we need more space for people to have distance from each other. Um, but what we're looking for before we say yes is someone that is willing to be the point person for that. We don't actually have to put on the shelter, we provide the space, but we need someone that would be the person that uh, the nonprofit that puts it on can be in touch with if they have questions. If I find, if we find someone that's willing to take on that role, then uh, the executive team will um, have a conversation about whether or not we're gonna go ahead with that. So if you're interested in something like that, please let me know. I, I've had some responses of people who their concerns are around uh, COVID protection and around insurance, all of those things I've already considered. Don't worry. Uh, what I'm looking for right now is a person, someone who is willing to do that or a group of people who are willing to do that together. But having one person is so much easier. So if you're interested, please do let me know. As we think about um, people that don't have homes and don't have places to be, uh, we've been focusing the last few weeks on a man named Herb from First United Church who uh, was homeless for a number of years and he got housing through First United Church. Um, he's been asked to reflect on the themes of Advent. And so this week he was asked, what does joy mean to you? His response was, I can tell you joy because I had pure joy when I saw my apartment for the first time. It's more appreciation for me, really. I think back to when this had never happened before and I can't. Joy is just deep appreciation for me. And so here, a reflection from Bev Brown at First United Church on Herb's response. Good afternoon. My name is Beverly Brown and I am the Indigenous Chaplain at First United. I'm brand new into this role and I'm just learning about what First United is and about its programs and services and uh, the people it serves so i'm very grateful to be new and to be warmly welcomed by everybody here at first united um, 
And I'm grateful to Herb for sharing his story about what joy means to him. As we move into the season of Advent, it's easy to be distracted because between Advent and all the preparations for Christmas, December can become one of the busiest months of the year, especially for families. Um, Many people believe that all of the events and the to-dos distract us from the true meaning of the season. But I think that the true meaning of Christmas is made even more real by the very experiences we sometimes take for granted. Uh, it's important as an Indigenous person to share what that means um, for me. There are particular festivities that we look forward to during the winter season. So um, for us, we have sweat lodge and we would do a winter solstice, which would mean that we would have a spiritual celebration together to celebrate that change of season. And we would rejoice with one another afterwards and share in food. We would eat together all of the things that we have harvested throughout the year so that we could share in storytelling and drumming and singing and praying together. And the family we see are experiences that help us fully realize an inward spiritual celebration that builds with anticipation during Advent and that we celebrate that on Christmas or in that Christmas season. I hope you enjoy your holidays and the season of Advent and you take time to think about what brings you joy um, and think about the practices that you have. Thank you. Have a good day. So with joy this week, we get to celebrate the birthdays of Bill, of Heather, Lilia, and Amelia, and the anniversaries of Bev and Russ and Linda and Tom. Happy birthday, happy anniversary, and may you continue to experience joy. We know that God loves a joyful giver. We're grateful for whatever you offer, whether it's in money, time, talent, however it is that you do that. If you are able and wish to contribute financially to the life of Jubilee United Church, there are a variety of ways. You can drop off or mail in a check. Someone will come and pick it up. You could join PAR, you can send an e-transfer. We also know that some of you regularly worship other places and that they need your support. And so we encourage you to continue to support them for whatever you offer. Thank you for your generosity. It is good to be together. As a way to dedicate the gifts that we have received to God, we join our hearts and voices together in song. Each week we hear a story of a familiar carol with perhaps a not so familiar story of origin that may have been rooted in tragedy, sorrow, resistance to war and oppression, perhaps changing your views on the hymn forever. Beethoven could not have imagined how the piece of music that we're going to sing 
would ring out around the world as a testament to undying spirit of the people when he composed Ode to Joy. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony was created when the aging and deaf Beethoven himself could not hear it at all. His silence was transformed into echoes through the ages as this music was used in protest marches against evil dictators and as hope in the midst of natural disaster. Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which is the basis of the tune for our hymn, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee, has been a powerful witness to the human spirit to overcome adversity in many instances across the globe. British punk star Billy Bragg once wrote an alternative translation of the original choral German choral score for a school teacher to teach the children in her classroom, and it soon became a popular anthem, even being performed for the Queen. In these words, you can hear the call to resist division, to raise our voices, to furnish every heart with joy and banish all hatred for good. We're not going to sing these words, but I want you to hear them anyways. See now like a phoenix rising from the rubble of the war, hope of ages manifested, peace and freedom evermore. Brothers, sisters, stand together, raise your voices now as one, though by history divided, reconciled in unison. Throw off now the chains of ancient bitterness and enmity, and in hand let's walk together on the path of liberty. Hark, a new dawn is breaking. Raise your voices now as one, though by history divided, reconciled in unison. What's to be then, all my brothers, sisters? What, are, what is your hearts? Tell me now the hopes you harbor. What's the task and where to start? Those speak 10 million voices. Every word is understood. Furnish every heart with joy and banish all hatred for good. So we have combined the Ninth Symphony with our traditional joy to the world for a Christmas ode to joy to the world. Let's sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive the King. Let every heart prepare in Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. Let heaven and nature sing. Oh, 
so focus on this week's candle and prepare to leave it where it is or place it in your wreath if you so desire to find it somewhere else, but pay attention to it in this moment. As we remember that we wait for justice, but we do not wait to work for change. We wait for restored health, but we do not wait to work to heal. We wait for wholeness, but we do not wait to work at binding brokenness. We wait for peace, but we do not wait to work to eliminate hatred. And so my friends, like bells ringing out the news that God is ever present with us, fill the night left by sadness with messages of joy. Go into your lives humming the tunes that keep the joy alive in you and that spur you on in your work of justice and reconciliation. Raise your voices and repeat after me. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Amen.